Hi, good evening, everyone. So today we'll discuss about another entrance exam and its pattern. So today we have Ashoka University and we'll go through all the details relating what exactly the course is all about, what's their focus during the entire two-year tenure, and of course, the exam pattern as well, okay? So when we talk about Ashoka University, it's arguably the best or among the best private university if someone aims to do their master's from a private university, okay? Uh, the best part about Ashoka University is that they try to focus on both economic theoretical part as well as analytical part as well. So overall, uh, you will find a balance between the two in the course structure over the four semesters that they have divided, okay? Uh, also, being a private university, they are able to get many companies on board at the campus to have different events uh, that will help students uh, in terms of what exactly is being expected out of them when they go out into the industry. Okay, so all those events from time to time at Ashoka also helps in terms of uh, development as well, right? Okay, uh, so now let's come to eligibility part. Okay, so again, eligibility, like in other videos also we have discussed, these are the modes to filter out a set of students. Okay, so over here in terms of eligibility, uh, they, are pretty, they are making it pretty much open for all the stream students. Okay, so like they have mentioned that they need the candidates need a recognized undergraduate degree in any discipline. Okay. Uh, when we say recognized undergraduate degree is nothing but the universities or the colleges which are being recognized or identified by UGC, okay? And any discipline, so it doesn't matter whether you are from eco background, non-eco background, okay? So they the, the eligibility criteria is pretty much open for all, okay? And undergraduate uh, degree in economics is not a prerequisite. Like in some of the entrances, you will find that being a uh, being a uh, being eligibility criteria that will filter out some of the student in the very first stage itself. Okay, but over here it's not, and it's pretty much open for all the students to give the entrance test of M Economic Entrance at Ashoka University. Okay, let's go to the procedural part. Okay, what all stages are there? What is the procedure? Okay. Like the other entrance that we uh, discussed uh, previously, over here also, they have a two-stage or a two-tier selection procedure. First being online test, okay? And the second one being, again, an interview, okay? So uh, over here, also, you like just like IGDA, you will have to go through the two-tier system. First, you will have to attempt and get a, get a more than cut-off marks. Ideally, you should have, you have to be among the top. Okay, once you crack the entrance test, then the selected candidates based on their score are, are asked to come for the interview. Okay, and after that, the final selection or the final set of students are selected for the respective academic sessions uh, batch. Okay, now let's go to the most important part, which is the exam pattern. Okay. So over here, you can see key, the number of questions are 50, whereas the duration is 180 minutes of, or three hours. The reason why I highlighted this, uh, this comparison is because at time, this speaks or this gives you information as to what degree or what quality of questions might be asked to you. So if they are considerably giving you good enough time on each question, then they will require a good degree of understanding from your end, okay? That is why they are giving 180 minutes or three hours for 50 questions. 
Okay, so over here they have uh, namely section A, B, C, and D. Okay, so this is an interesting and to some of the students, it's it's kind of uh, beneficial to them. Okay, while I'm saying that, I'll come to that. So first thing first, uh, section A statistics. Okay, that's pretty much straightforward. Second is your analytical reasoning. Okay. In most of the entrances, you will find a section which consists of comprehension, English, reasoning, general awareness, current affairs. Okay. So this is this is just the subset of that kind of scenario. Okay. Over here, there isn't, they are not asking you any English. Okay. They are not asking you any elementary level of maths as well. They are completely dedicated towards analytical reasoning. So the reasoning questions will be there, okay? Then these two, section A and section B, both are compulsory. That is that you will have to attempt. But here comes the interesting part. Wherein you can attempt either section C or section D. Why it's interesting is because section, A, section C is completely economics. Section D is completely mathematics. Now, like I mentioned, this will help certain students. Many a times, some students are not that comfortable with maths. However, they have solid grip on economics part, be it micro, macro, dev eco, or Indian eco, international, whatever it is, right? But when it comes to eco, they have strong grip or they will give themselves 10 out of 10. But when it comes to maths, they, they tend to feel key, something or the other is or maybe the question might not, they will not be able to click it, right? So they don't have that much level of confidence which they have on economics, okay? So in that scenario, those students can go for economics part instead of maths. And vice versa also applies. Some students have solid grip in maths. They are confident. They give themselves 10 on 10. But maybe in economics, maybe in, maybe just in ma macro part, let's say, for example, they might not be comfortable. Okay, Maybe international economics is something that they are not able to get it. Okay, So they tend, they might go for mathematics, section D over section C, which is completely economics. Right? So you can do either, not both. Uh, now coming to the marking scheme. So uh, as per their website, they say one mark for each correct answer, whereas one by four or 0.25 is deducted for every wrong answer. Okay. So here's the syllabus, okay, which they have provided us. Uh, so over here you have related to microeconomics. It's pretty straightforward or something that we have already covered in our intermediate level itself. Okay. And there are certain topics for which you can refer to our advanced level lectures also. Okay. Then similarly, you can go and have a look again, basic. Uh, we call it as a very basic thing because we have already done it in our intermediate level. Okay. So macro, and then you have your maths. Okay. Set, theory, logic, functions. Okay. And then you have stats that we discussed. They have point estimation, hypothesis testing as well. Okay, mean, median, mode, right? Okay. Then let's go to the final part, which is your analytical reasoning. Okay. So let me tell you when this section comes in, okay, or this section being part of any other uh, big section, like which has com comprehension, English or other, when in whatever scenario it comes in, the best, uh, the best approach is to try and solve as many questions as possible, okay? And even in that, if possible, try to solve variety of questions, okay? So maybe you can solve uh, DI data interpretation five question, okay? Maybe you can solve direction questions, five questions, okay? So then age question and so on, family tree and others. There's a lot of content which is required, right? So for this particular ethical reasoning, you can refer the sample paper as well, okay? And try to solve as many possible, uh, as many uh, questions as possible, okay? Now coming to the final part, which is your dates, the important dates. So the application for Ashoka University is about to close on 31st March. Request all the students not to wait 
for 31st March and register as soon as possible if their it's uh, their, their idea is very pretty much clear that they will be giving a Shoka University exam, right? Whereas the exam date is on 7th May. So wish all of you best of luck for the exam. Thank you.